OK, so I noticed several students were trying to work ahead into week five. Chapter five's material on sample distribution. So this may not be the most magical presentation I can put together, but wanted to get it out for those people that are working ahead. I posted a tool to help you with the first question, because I noticed several people attempted the first question, but didn't seem to move on. It should teach you several things that will help you do the other questions. I'm also going to go over some cool Excel functions that uh, will help you in other situations. The first thing I want to talk about is a vector. Um, it's probably not going to go over it in your book, but the way I'm going to use stuff, it's going to be helpful. So a vector is a type, a special kind of matrix that is only one column or one row. So a column of numbers is a vector, or a row of numbers is a vector. Um, hence called column vectors and row vectors. This is a uh, Despicable Me ca character called Vector. So if you've watched Despicable Me, you'll know that character. But let's look at vectors in Excel. So we have a row vector, as well, right? And we have a column vector which is a column. So also add another row vector. So why I particularly want to teach you this is we can do something called a sum product formula equals sum product. And what that does is it's going to take this vector, also called an array in Excel, and add and sum the product of these two rows together. So what it's going to do the long way would be this value times this value plus this value times this value plus this value times this value. And you see this is with math mathematically is going on behind the sum product formula. So just wanted to show that you could do that. Um, vectors have to be the same length, obviously. So we have a, uh, it's a one by three vector times another one by three vector. But we can do it anytime we have the same length. So let's say we wanted to multiply this row vector by this column vector. Maybe it's not going to let me do it because they're including the same number. Let's try this. Okay. All right, so technically we should be able to multiply those together. But um, let's try it the other way. In Excel, we can multiply two row vectors, so we should be able to also multiply two column vectors. Okay. So two rows or two columns. Um, if we had multiplied a row vector by a column vector, uh, we should have gotten a, a number, but that goes beyond the scope of this class. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you is just basically the sum product formula. So everything we've talked about up until this point has been on parameters, which are a measure from a population. So P, parameter, population. And then we're trying to generally get some inference based on a sample that we're going to take. So samples is a statistic. So S, sample, statistic. We're going to calculate this on observations in our sample. Um, common statistics and parameters. X bar is our sample statistic. And mu is our population parameter. 
for standard deviation, we use S and sigma. For variance, it's S squared and sigma squared. And then binomial proportions, which we'll talk about briefly, we have P hat and P. So the sampling distribution is a sample statistic calculated from a sample of n measurements. And it's, it'll give the probability distribution of that statistic. So if we have several samples and we find the distribution, sampling distribution is going to be the distribution of a statistic across an infinite number of samples. Um, developing a sample distribution, let's say we have a population size of n equals four. So we have four people. We want to, we're interested in a random variable x that can take on values of one, two, three, or four. So we can have one, two, three, or four. And we have to have some kind of distribution. In this case, it's a uniform distribution. Uniform distribution because each of the possible uh, people has a 25% chance to find the um, mean of that, um, is the sum of all the x i's, so all of our random variables, divided by the um, total sample size, or in this case, the population size. So 1, 2, 3, 4, divided by 4 is 2.5. So let's look at all possible samples of size n equals 2. So that will give us the sample means of each of those. So 1 and 1, we average those together, we get 1.0. So if we have 1 and 2, we take the average at 1 plus 2 divided by 2 is 3 divided by 2, which is 1.5. We do that for each combination of observations. We then can build our probability or our sampling distribution by finding the percentage of occurrences for each of these uh, means. So how many times do we see 1.0 on this table? See it one time, it should be one sixteenth. So one point zero should be one sixteenth. Then how many times do we see one point five? See one, two. So that will be sixteenth. Same thing with two point zero. We have three sixteenths. Finally. 2.5 will be on the diagonal, and it'll be 4 sixteenths, which is 25%, which will be the middle of our sampling distribution. Same way we find 3.0 is 3 sixteenths, 3.5 is 2 sixteenths, and 4.0 is 1 sixteenth. So the way we find the sample mean is the same idea. We add up all of our um, sample means, we divide by our total in our sample, and we'll get 2.5. So we get the same population mean as we get our sample mean, which means that this is an unbiased estimator. Point estimator of a population parameter is a rule or formula that tells us how to use the sample data to calculate a single number that can be used as an estimate of the population parameter. The sampling distribution sample statistic has a mean equal to the population parameter. The statistic is intended to estimate the statistic is said to be an unbiased estimator, which is what I said of the parameter. 
the mean of the sampling distribution is not equal to the parameter, the statistic is said to be a biased estimator of the parameter. Let's do an example. We have this probability distribution. Let's see. Okay. Pull this up. Zero. Our random variables are zero, two, and three with equal probabilities. Closer. So with this calculator, we can find the population mean of 1.667 by doing the sum product formula. We're going to multiply our random variable x vector times the probability of those random variables occurring. So that's why I wanted to show you the sum product function. We can find the variance, this formula. We're going to do a similar sum product function, but we have to calculate out the difference between the mean squared first. So in here, I just found the difference of our random variable from the mean value and then squared it. That gives us each of these values. Then we take the sum product of this times the probabilities. And then to get standard deviation, um, we just take the square root of that value. Okay, so if we have a sampling distribution for our x bar, which is our sample mean, and we have n equals 2, so we have three possible samples, each with a sample mean, and we're going to look at what occurs when we pull our all the possible combinations of two uh, variables. So we can see that the expectation of our sample is 1.67, and that is the same as our population mean. Thus, our sample mean is an unbiased estimator of our population mean. So properties of the sampling distribution of x bar or sample mean, if it is unbiased, then the expectation of our sample mean should be equal to the true population parameter of uh, population mean. To find the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, we have to take our standard deviation and divide by the square root of our sample size. Standard error of the mean uh, is standard deviation of a statistic. And what makes it different is we take into account that sample size. So here, because we are dividing by n, that's our sample size. And that's what changes it to standard error. So a random sample of n observations is selected from a population with normal distribution, sampling distribution of x bar, which is the sample mean, will be normally distributed. Where does that come from? Well, first we're going to look at 
our central tendency, which is our mean. And we're going to look at our standard error of our sampling distribution. And what we'll notice is, well, as we standardize that sampling distribution of x um, from the sample distribution, we'll eventually with, let's see, these are normally distributed. And if we look at the sampling distribution of non-normal populations, what we will find is through the central limit theorem, um, we have a sample of n observations selected from a population, any probability distribution with a mean and a standard deviation. Then when n is sufficiently large, which comes back to the law of large numbers, the sampling distribution of our uh, sample mean will be approximately a normal distribution with when because the population mean of the uh, sample mean will equal the population mean and standard deviation so the sample deviation will equal the true standard deviation of population larger the sample size, the more, the closer it will uh, reach a normal approximation. So hopefully this picture explains a little bit. As our sample size increases, our non-normal distribution, whatever it is, will approach a normal distribution of when we, through continuous sampling. And as the sample size increases, um, the distribution approach is the normal distribution. Generally, we need at least n equal, our n is greater than or equal to 30. So a sample size of 30. So if you're doing, let's say, survey work, this is why generally you need a minimum of 30 samples or 30 surveys to even do basic level analysis. And then for a higher level, um, survey analysis, you'll need sample size of 200. But at this point, all we need to know is we need a minimum sample size of 30 for our statistics to work based on the central limit theorem. Sample proportion, just as the sample mean is a good estimator of the population, and the sample proportion denoted as p hat is a good estimator of the population proportion. Um, how good that is depends on the sampling distribution of the statistic. This sampling distribution has properties similar to those of the sampling distribution of uh, our sample mean. So I developed this calculator to help you guys on the first homework question one. What you'll do is you'll put your numbers in here. And there's different functions. Like I said, some product will help you <clears throat> calculate out this. But this is only, the second part's only going to be for sample size two. When you get to question two, it's a sample size of three. So you're going to have to adapt the idea of this spreadsheet or calculate them out manually to um, get it to, to solve question two. So it's going to give you all the iterations. So another interesting formula to get this to work is concatenate, which will take text from two cells and concatenate them together. So to get your iterations, um, to get, we have sample size two, so I took the value of one, which is zero, comma, the value of V1. So we get zero, comma, zero. Same thing with the next one. We can concatenate the value in V2, 
one comma with C one. So we get zero comma one. Then we just I used a basic average formula to find the mean and I calculated out standard deviation. And the probabilities of each of those I calculated out manually. So then it's going to ask you to put the sample means in ascending order. So I developed a um, if statement that will find how to put these in order. And then it's going to sum the probabilities up for those values. And that's how you get those. Very similarly, when we go to do the standard deviation, that's going to be the second thing that's calculated. Um, it will find the values and put them ascending order and then calculate out or sum up the probabilities for each of those values. Finally, it will do a sum product of the sample means and their probabilities to give you the expectation of our sample mean. And same thing with the expectation of our uh, sample variance. So hopefully that helps you. Anybody who is doing, trying to get ahead on week five, chapter five homework, if there's any other problems you have, let me know and I can try to answer them.